Bo. Yeah. So there was an article I was reading recently about a, a real problem that's getting worse and worse. And that is when people send unsolicited graphic pictures, I understand that there can be enormous psychological effects. And in addition to which, there are a lot of people now that are talking about making it a standalone crime. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know if you remember, and we're going to dance around what we call these things because they're called something in pop popular parlance. My kids throw it around all the time as a term. But um, you remember Anthony Weiner? I didn't send the photograph that was this this hacker did. I didn't send it to the woman in question. She didn't get it. She, she, she's made a statement to that effect. Congressman, almost mayor, Anthony Weiner. Yeah. Now, I mean, he was sending provocative pictures of himself to minors. Didn't work out so well for him, did it? Well, no, but the thing is, now, those weren't actually nude. He was wearing underwear, but you could see enough. And it was certainly inappropriate enough that I, at the time, I remember thinking uh, uh, there ought to be a law. Look like a joke, look like a bad joke about my name, but I did not send that photograph. I think there absolutely should be a law. It's to me, it's just, it's it's not fair to do to somebody uh, what these people do. No, I mean, it's it. it I mean, I think Tra <laughs> Travis is waiting to see if I'll bring this up right now. It is not fair. It is not fair when you just going about your day, and all of a sudden, bam. There's a picture of a of a of a of a, a body new, part of a body part. I had a completely different reaction to it than maybe the world did. To me, it looked like a joke, a bad joke about my name. And I didn't um, so and we're not talking about being in a medical class. No, but we are talking about those, you know, dirty old men in trench coats on the corner. You know, photographs can be manipulated and can be changed, can come from one period of time and be dropped in a mailbox somewhere somewhere else. I, um, you know, I, I do think there should be a law. And I'll tell you, as the father of two girls, uh, one of whom is recently no longer a teenager, but the other one is still a teenager, I can tell you that both of them have received these pictures, unwanted, from strangers. And in my eyes... I haven't seen them, actually, but in, in, in my opinion, that's a crime. So why don't people want there to be a law? Is this like a libertarian thing? Um, and that's one of the things we're going to try to find out. Is this, is this a, uh, you know, you have, I have the right to bear... Free expression? <laughs> bear myself. The right, the right to bear limb. The right to bear bear. The only thing I could uh, imagine here is that intent is really hard to prove, especially if it's just a photo. That it could be something that you're that you're saying, you know, that was between two consenting adults. And then if someone says, I received this and I was not consenting, that can be very difficult to prove in a court of law. But how about if it's not an adult that receives it? That should be a whole nother ball of Yeah, no, Travis, I don't agree. If a 15-year-old kid gets it, that's just messed up. Oh, I'm, I'm not advocating for that. I'm just saying I think that's the, uh, that's the difficulty. If you have a say adult sending that to a 15 year old that's one thing if you have one 15 year old sending it to another 15 year old that ends up being another can of worms entirely well though and and, and, and i think in that context you know even if it's like uh has there's no sexual intent it's just like rick rolling somebody um well which actually does bring up the story so back before <laughs> digital you're things, dying to tell this story. i can't help it it's funny I, in a perfectly consensual, in a perfectly consensual situation, I decided it was a smart idea to, let's just say, scan. Well, let, we, that's exactly what I did. I scanned a part of my body and I sent it to my beloved who had requested this. And it was all great until you the next sat morning. on a copy machine? I it doesn't matter what I did. I held it in a certain place and I got the scan. It worked. Oh. It actually required quite a bit of experimentation, but I got the picture. And, and then, contortion, I assume, too. Let me tell the story. So then oh, okay. the next morning, Travis, Travis and I have worked together since the late 90s. <laughs> Travis came into work and turned on his computer and what should flash up first on the screen <laughs> from the scanner? Oh! And I was 18, no. so... And he was not expecting it, and he did nope. not ask for it, and so there's a question. Was Did I commit a crime? There's an eye-opener. Yeah. <laughs> you're not gonna, you're not gonna give me an answer there? You're just gonna let it, let it, you're just gonna let it hang out there? 
back then, what, whatever was last scanned on the scanner was still on the scanner. Oh, the scanner. I would the also scanner. like to point out that you broke the scanner, apparently, <laughs> when trying to um, take said <laughs> candid I did close break up. the scanner. It's and true. then you asked me to fix the scanner. So that's what I was... Uh, yeah. So, And when you think about it being an, uh, like a mobile phone these days, that's a relatively small image. This is sort of the uh, IMAX experience. <laughs> that was... Um, yeah. Well, I apologize. <laughs> But the question is, it was, you know, like, technically, I have to say, technically, that was a crime. Because you were a minor. Or maybe you weren't a minor. I was 18. But yeah. Okay. Still. It's messed up. And like I'm a few months better. earlier, it would have been that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we have to regret the things one can't unsee. <laughs> That's right. It's like you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube again <laughs> no. after that one. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Welcome to What the Hack with Adam Levin, a show about hackers, scammers, and the people who get got by them. I'm Adam Levin, Cyber Ringmaster. I'm Bo Cyber Curious. And I'm Travis, Cyber Traumatized by Bo. <laughs> <laughs> we love our What the Hack guests and their willingness to share their experiences in the shadowy world of cybercrime. But that said, you probably don't want to become our next cautionary tale about all the things that can go really wrong online. These days, you need an Internet security solution that can detect and block threats like phishing email and ransomware files before they get to you. ESET Internet Security does just that, and a lot more. ESET Internet Security protects your online banking and payments by providing a special secure browser for financial transactions. It alerts you if someone's trying to access your webcam and keeps you invisible to hackers when you're using public Wi-Fi. Best of all, ESET Internet Security provides anti-phishing technology to block attempts to steal your username and passwords. Because we all know what criminals can do with those. Right now, you can try ESET Internet Security free for 30 days. Head to try.eset dot com slash hack to claim your free trial. That's try dot e s e t dot com slash hack. Travis, I know you've been using the public app to trade stocks and cryptocurrency. What's all this business about buying slices of stocks? It's a really cool idea, actually. Instead of needing to buy an entire share, especially for a pretty expensive uh, stock like Apple, you can just buy a fraction of it, as little as a dollar. So I hear there's a social media component to it. Do people actually share good information on there? They do. I've never really been too financially savvy. So it's been really educational for me to be able to see not just what people are investing in on the platform, but also why. So they'll explain a little bit about why they think it's a good investment and a good place to store their money. So you like it so far? Well, one thing that I looked for right away and was very satisfied with the result was that they have a strong privacy policy. With a lot of financial apps and a lot of trading apps, they will actually sell what you're doing to third parties and public.com does not do that. So from a privacy standpoint, they're really solid. That sounds great. So how do our listeners get active on public? It's really easy, actually. They can just go to public.com to download the app and they can start investing with as little as a dollar and they can get a free slice of stock of up to $50. And if they want to help us out, they can just go to public.com slash what the hack and sign up with code what the heck. That's all one word. Valid for U.S. residents 18 and older, subject to account approval, See public.com slash disclosures, not investment advice. Today we're talking with Lisa Seifert, who's an old friend of Bo's. Lisa's a model and an actor and most recently a really great writer. Um, she's also most recently had a bad experience on Instagram, which has made her rethink social media altogether. Lisa did not connect to audio. Can you hear me? I can hear you. <laughs> oh my god. Well, okay, so we're going to we're going to get the show on the road here. I'm scared, guys. I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> so, first of all, when I think of Australia, I think of Hugh Jackman, I think of the Hemsworths, I think of kangaroos, platypuses, koala bears, and Lisa Seifert. And not necessarily in that order. I hope not. 
So, Lisa, you're like you're originally from Australia, but you're living now in New York, correct? Yes, I've been living in New York off and on for about 24 years, as you can tell from my weird accent. Um, but I've lived in London for two years. I lived in France. I live in Germany. I've kind of jumped around all over the place, but I always come back to New York. And you're a model and an actor. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, she's a model. She's an actor, but you're a writer. I'm getting paid more as a writer now, but I'm not really sure how well that's going in the big scheme of things. <laughs> so what, what are some of the things you write? Um, well, you know what I write. You helped me with one of my novels, my first novel, um, which I optioned the rights to a year ago to make into an animation movie. Yeah. But that's that's gone a little pear shaped. <laughs> when whenever I see a pink <laughs> dolphin, I think of you. Um, I didn't even know Aww. they existed, I'm but flattered. I didn't even know they existed before. I me either. So is this adult animation or is it children's children stuff or what? No, it's, yeah, it's children's. But like the adults would enjoy it too, right? Well, Bo? I mean, I think the idea was when we were working on it. So that. So wait, first tell tell. There's going to be a people listening who have no idea what a pink dolphin is. <laughs> and can I just say this is my first podcast and this is my first time describing a pink dolphin to someone in, right. in real time? You said it. Now, what are they? <laughs> they're uh, freshwater. They're freshwater dolphins. They're pink freshwater dolphins, and they come in an array of grays to like hubba bubba bubble gum pink. Uh, and they're mostly found in you know they're in the Amazon. They're endangered, but there's all this like really cool mysticism behind them and everything. But once I was like, so the, how I found, I was obsessed in the Amazon as a child and I thought I knew everything about it. And then cut to my adulthood. I had just broken up with a rock star. I was essentially homeless because I was taking care of him for three years. He was a heroin addict. And then when we broke up, I had nothing and I was on my friend's couch and I'm sitting there and I'd also just ruined a contract with this modeling agency that I joined a couple years prior because I was too busy taking care of my heroin addict boyfriend. And I'm sitting on my French couch where I was sleeping in Brooklyn and I saw a TV commercial for Peru come up and I had two pink dolphins jumping out of the water. And I was like, that's false mm. advertising. <laughs> like, what the hell? They made like, it up. I was like, really bitter. <laughs> and I Googled it. and I You was can't like, fool me with your shit. stupid pink dolphins. <laughs> Yeah, that's that that should be illegal. So in other words, this is this is very different than when a lawyer stands in front of a jury and says, "Close your eyes, do not see the blue elephant." This is actually a real yeah creature. Yeah, they're they're so majestic. They're really, I think. They're are they cool. pink because of like the same reason flamingos are pink because they eat something? No, they're no. Stained. I know that for a fact. They're not because of the crustacean. Why? Why are no. they? I'm not really sure. I should don't test me hey, right now. Hey. On like <laughs> <laughs> Now, yeah. when you were before you were a writer, you were a model and and you still are a model. What um what kind of modeling do you have you done? Do you do? Are you known for? Um I've done an, like pretty much the whole spectrum <laughs> i've done makeup campaigns you know i did victoria's secrets back in the day i've done this thing called pirelli calendar which is pretty oh, yeah. mm -hmm. you've heard of this uh I it's buy one every year for my wife no way oh my gosh so yeah. you would have had mine who shot yours yes who shot yours mm -hmm. Bruce Bruce Weber. Weber. and was that our friend jennifer star fabulous, who cast it fabulous that? photographer Yes, it was Miss Jennifer Starr. So that means that you've done in your day, you have done some nude modeling before. Since I've I've always been comfortable with my body, uh, but I would only take my clothes off for a photographer that I respect uh -huh. their work. You know, like it's someone that I've always wanted to work with. Like there's a picture in the background right here. This huge poster. This was for an art exhibition, and all the money went Is to charity. <laughs> yeah, it's me. It's like mocked from a old movie mm. poster. I thought it was Marilyn Monroe. Um, I think. No, it's me. <laughs> uh, but I've done French. I'm a French playmate and an American playmate. Boy For school, a playboy. So I don't really tell people that. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Dual citizenship playmate. Dual citizenship. 
<laughs> Hello? If you don't stop bothering me about ratings, I'm gonna, I swear to God, you're making me lose my mind. I need ratings. Ratings. For what? I, I don't want to be underrated. I don't need ratings. I personally have plenty of good self-esteem around this show. I think we're doing a good job. We need like people who listen, who say, hello, I love you. For what? Don't you want to be loved? I want to be loved. We are don't you podcast love me? Cast lovable. No. If you're listening people. to this really pathetic thing right now and you want to just stop, the Once easiest way to make that happen is to is to review the show and rate it on Apple Podcasts. It's not going to stop. Your head. He won't this quit. This is our moment. We need to have <laughs> rate the show, please. Okay, Adam, but knock it off. Um, Lisa, so I have a question. We, we we're here today because. You had an unfortunate experience on Instagram, which, as I understand, hasn't even been resolved yet. So I am my Instagram page is private and I didn't think something like this could happen to me because it was private. But I got a message saying uh, it looked all very, very, very official. Uh, like I didn't think I could be fooled. Like I, I bought it hook line, hook, line, and sinker. And it was a message saying that um, we've gone over your page and we've come to the decision to make your, to verify your page. Just hit the link below, which looked like an official Instagram link. Hit the link below and just put your email and then your phone number. I'm so, I feel so stupid saying that. But, and then, and then check your emails or something like this, right? So I freaking mm. did it. <laughs> And the next minute I get a WhatsApp message <laughs> from some creepy man in Turkey sending me a picture of a screenshot of my Instagram page. And I'm like, wow, this is so confusing. Who is this person? Right. And then he was like, bro. And I was like, who is this? And then I looked into my Instagram and I couldn't get in. And I'm like, wait, did you steal my Instagram? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty straightforward. <laughs> and like anytime I would... <laughs> well, at least he was direct. Any, he was very direct. And anytime I tried to like recover it, because you can like, you know, hit a button to recover your email or something like this and change the password, it would just straight go to his email yeah, and his I, phone number. We're familiar, we're familiar with the hack. Um, so what did, did they root around in your messages? Did this person have any, oh, yeah, what did they, they do? He said that he was asking for thousands of dollars. He also said, if you don't, pay me i'm going to he was already messaging people in my messages and i have that? a lot of like i think because okay. he told me did your friends tell you but did any of, did any of them tell of you him doing that uh mm-hmm. one did didn't he mess did he message you bo no right yes he messaged me that's how i knew you got hacked mm. um but he was saying anyone that had a like the blue tick the verification or whatever it's called um, sometimes people send their phone numbers or sometimes people, I mean, I don't send explicit pics to anyone. You can just Google me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> They're not explicit, <laughs> but I would never do that for this reason in a way, you know? Uh, and he was threatening to release personal information and stuff. But were there people. explicit pictures in there not yours of other people or? Yeah. Over, you know, over the course of years, of course, there's, you know, dummies that do that. Uh-huh. And I don't reply not most of the time well they're unsolicited they, the we were just talking about this. are they unsolicited <laughs> they were unsolicited right yeah they're unsolicited they're like yeah, you know yeah, yeah, i yeah. know i don't I've, i never asked for a dick pic look i don't want to so like it. i know what will make you fall in love with me i mm-hmm. i will send you a picture of my my self naked or like hey baby does this turn you on or, or but like i think they send it because it thinks that it'll like make me want to like and does engage it? which is no, it does the opposite, obviously. <laughs> does it, I mean, it seems like assault to me, actually. Yeah, it's gross. Like, it's disturbing. Sometimes, you know, I've had situations where it'll be someone in a relationship and it makes me feel grimy. And I mean, I don't even respond, but it makes me feel, it doesn't make me feel good. Like, it shakes me up for like How the rest of the day. How do you know they're day. in a relationship? Are they like... Because it's Instagram. You can see oh, everything. Right. 
Well, what do you think? What do you think of this thing that BBC just? Uh, I think you sent me the article, Lisa. What do you think about? Yeah, I said I didn't read it. I just read like a couple lines of it, and then I sent <laughs> oh, it to you because it wasn't about what we were. Well, talking I'll tell about. you the gist of it was they're thinking that maybe it should be against the law to say. Send... No, I think it should be for sure. It's like, it's gross. Well, for me, it's gross. I don't want to see that. I feel icky. Yeah. Like you know, I kind of feel. I don't know. It doesn't make me mm. feel good. So what what happened next? So he's going through these pictures. He found some pictures that were compromising, but they, it doesn't sound like they were compromising you. No, he just thought that that would be enough to like freak me out, which I mean, it kind of was, you know, because I don't want to throw people under the bus. I don't want anything to do with that. I don't want drama. <laughs> you need to buy yourself time so we can figure it out, you know, because this guy was like, I need it by tonight and blah blah i was like well actually i'm about to walk in to have my wisdom teeth out so i can't deal with this right now true or not true not true (laughs) but that was a very interesting comeback uh i think that both suggested i say that no (laughs) yeah i did i i just wanted to come up with something that that was like there's no answer back to it like dude i'm not going to be able to no wisdom teeth i'm going to be knocked out it's like I'm having a I'm having a brain operation this he evening. Does. So and then uh, so like he was working on it for the next couple of days, and then the guy didn't write me until like a week and a half later, and it, I didn't even hear from him. And then he wrote me like three four days ago, bro, again. Then I was like having a bad morning three mornings ago, and I was crying, and I wake up and I crawl into my neighbor's bed, and like we have cuddles, and I'm like, Sammy, let me check my Instagram, you know, or, like show me my Instagram. I haven't seen it for a couple of weeks, and it wasn't there. Like, maybe he had the inkling that someone was toying with his whole hacking situation. And it's possible. I don't know. Yeah, it's possible he just deleted my whole page, which is kind of annoying because, like, I get a lot of castings and and jobs from it. You know, it's like years of choreographing this page, which is also a full time job. And I hate Instagramming. So to lose all that, like, I think it's going to affect my work, you know. Yeah, we've talked about situations like that before where people do a significant percentage of their marketing by way yeah. of their Instagram page. I hate and it. If they get locked out of their Instagram page, they're, yeah. they're jeopardizing their, their mm-hmm. business. Yeah. So I'm looking right now, and it does appear that it's gone. Um, yeah, it's It doesn't gone. mean that it's gone forever. It doesn't mean that it's gone forever. It, it's So here's uh, Travis, who hasn't, chimed in yet but travis Mm -hmm. why don't you um explain time machines and uh and backups and files and And the the possibility just even if it's a complete lie i want you to explain an alternate universe where her instagram account still exists (laughs) all right in some cases if you contact tech support they will help resurrect your account resurrect wow you had to make it spiritual huh I couldn't even contact them, though. Right. (laughs) One thing I've uh, suggested that people do is that if you go to Facebook and say that you're about to advertise on Facebook or Instagram then they're going to be a lot more uh, receptive to helping you out with the account issues. Oh, that's that's true, Lisa. So, yeah, so you go to Facebook, which owns Instagram, and you mm-hmm. say, I, you know, I'm, I'm about to launch a new book, true, right? And mm-hmm. I am going to spend $50,000 in marketing money to, to do that. So I'm just lying, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, they don't, do you think Mark Zuckerberg's not the king of honesty? So, um... <laughs> So, You've already lied about wisdom teeth. It's you know. yeah. I mean, I know, you know, but that's a white Mark. Line. Mark. If anyone deserves it, it's Mark Zuckerberg. So you say, you know, we're going to spend fifty grand, um, but I need my Instagram account back because that's where I want to do the majority. That's where the majority of my followers are, and it got hacked. Can you help me? I'm guessing that's the best shot you have at getting it back. What do you think, yeah, Travis? Yeah, absolutely. Like you can, you could sit there forever trying to get um, tech support from Instagram or even tech support from yeah. Facebook or Meta or whatever they're calling themselves now. But say, yes. but you can get advertiser support very quickly. Okay, of course, they want all your money. Benjamins. 
Yeah, yep. so that takes a couple of seconds just to get someone there. Um, they may not believe it. They may not help. Uh, I've seen it work, though, and I've I've run this before, and I've been able to get someone's account back. We've yeah, run well, this scam against Mark it. Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah. You and Mark you know, Zuckerberg. So, but yeah. you, but Lisa, you have to do something that you're not good at, which is you have to, you're going to have to lie. <laughs> I'm the worst. Yeah. I'm you're also bad at, like, it. public speaking. <laughs> oh, you just uh, do it by typing. True, Ooh, true, 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 true. But... Do you, do you, like, what's, your, how do you feel about social media now? Like, I know. I hate it. Like, first of all, it ruined my, my industry for me, you know, uh, and they're just, I don't know. It's just, I think it's all smoke and mirrors. It's not, there's nothing real or genuine about it. And also like rate, day rates have gone down because of all this like Instagramming situation. I don't know. It's just, it's changed in every way, shape and form. So are you talking about it's Instagram hard. models? Yeah. Like those Instagram yeah. girls? Yeah. And guys? It's like everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and their mother. <laughs> In our humble opinion, they don't hold a candle to you. Look, I'm an old hen right now, so. <laughs> no, old. I know something. Yeah, about. me too. Old and you're not. Um, but so you, but you have, um, you, you, you have a, an opinion. I'm hearing more and more from people, which is, why am I? Why am I? Or a question. Why am I doing this? Why am I? I have here? to do it if I want to continue modeling. Like that's what I have to do. I have to play the game, and I have to put myself out there, and I have to post a picture every day, of a picture that's like, of me. Like I prefer to post pictures of a sunset or my dog. To be honest. <laughs> yeah, Atlas. I get yeah, Atlas. I get zero likes on that. If I post a really really sexy picture, I get like tons and tons of likes, and then also. A lot of clients these days will book you on how many followers you have. Do, how many followers did you have? Not many, like 14,000 or something. I'm not even sure. Like, I really don't enjoy it. No, but 14,000 would not be an easy number to re recreate right away. No, it took me forever, but I'm also really bad at Instagramming. And mm. I, it took me years to get to 14,000. I've lost tons of followers at times. Don't know why I... Uh, someone in my situation i'm sure if i like worked the system because there's like a whole way to do it you know which i don't know i'm sure i could have more followers like <laughs> well but so let's just say you decided never to go on there again what would you do then like what would what what would like well for like... years i'm like i should just delete instagram you know i waste so much time on it like when i'm bored or like when my attention like when i'm writing and I get to a hard point in writing, mm -hmm. I'd prefer to just pick up the phone and distract myself and look at Instagram, you know? And like, right. I've, I always think about deleting it for good, and but now it's gone for good. I'm like, oh shit. Like, so the, the, assume for the moment it's not gone for good, but how did you feel when you got mm -hmm. hacked like this? Like vulnerable. And I messaged, I WhatsApp him back and I was like, why are you doing this to me right now? How can you treat people like this? I'm like, everyone's going through it right now and everyone's struggling. Everyone I know is going through kind of a hard time. <laughs> and I'm like, well, how could you do this? It's so inhumane. And he wrote back, I don't care. Instagram itself, too, I and mean, we've been hearing enough of these stories um, from people who are, you know, known public figures, but also just people who, you know, are just everyday uh, folks. And um, the number of security issues that are coming that seem to be specific to Instagram is just, uh, it's staggering. It's mind-blowing. It's messed up. That it's something where I really do think that, um, again, going back to Zuckerberg, especially when you think about how much uh, money he has in the bank, yeah. they could be investing a lot more into keeping that platform more secure and putting some yeah. pretty basic protections. Or having some better ideas about how to keep it secure. Right. They don't care. They just well, no, think and, about and, themselves and, and, in their bank account, right? No, and in, in addition to making it more secure, also putting money into being able to respond more quickly yeah. to people who are not throwing money at you because they want to advertise, yeah. but yeah. human beings that are yeah. trusting you with their information and their yeah. images and everything else. Yeah. And then when something goes wrong, it's like <laughs> crickets. Mm -hmm. There's nobody can't find anybody. Nothing. And they don't care. <laughs> but I wonder, no, this Turkish scam is not new. Adam. No, there's a group of men that do it. Apparently. Yeah, Ivana, we know we did it. We've we've talked to two people in previous episodes who've been mm -hmm. the victim of the same circle of hackers. Yeah. 
it's it's kind it's of scary. I don't feel safe. Well, but I think like it, it does raise the question of, um, I mean, the person on this. There's two people on this this podcast right now who can say something about this, and there's two people who can't. You and I can't. Mm-hmm. Um, Adam and Travis can. Travis has an Instagram account, and there's no pictures on it. And Adam has an Instagram account, and there's one picture on it, because I think he thought he had to put a picture on it to get on, to join. And it was a, it was a gallon, was it was a gallon water it was a bottle of water in the front seat of a car. Yeah. It's amazing. Can I Because he wanted to say he carries some back? water. <laughs> That's right. I carry water no, for my wife. But you have an amazing following, Adam, for someone with just a bottle of water up there. I love it. Well, we do we do post a lot of things that are privacy related. Well, that's your that's your your blue check Instagram. account. Your blue check account has tens of yeah. thousands of followers, but your actual personal yeah. account, the one where you lurk and you say the water bottle. Well, he says he says like he'll just comment like rather funny things on if he follows you and he knows yeah. you, then he will chime in from time to time with his personal account, which has a water jug on it, and then. <laughs> Yeah, I, I try to I try to come up with like f- famous <laughs> sayings and things. I love I love to write captions. My wife says yeah. to me, my wife says to me, "You just troll me." <laughs> I said, "No, but the only way that I can find out what you're doing during the day, so I don't have to bother you, is I just go on Instagram." <laughs> so and I go, oh, so there she is today. She's doing yeah, that. You do okay. like cartoon captions, but it's not the New Yorker; it's the New Jersey or <laughs> it kind of yeah. It's it starts like kind yo, of a yo, bro. You know? so, but but yo. but my question to you guys is. If you didn't have Instagram tomorrow, you neither of you would. Well, Adam, you wouldn't be able to um, stalk your wife, but <laughs> troll. I couldn't yeah. troll but, but, um, my wife. But, yeah. but Travis, you wouldn't care, right? No. And and let me ask you a question. Like, he looks like he won't care either. Yeah. Are you getting a lot? He's not lying. Are that's you that's getting a lot talk. of bookings, Travis, through through uh, Instagram? Yeah, no, I'm not. My um, livelihood does not depend on it. So you have and a that's website. the kicker. Is yeah. that that's the you... kicker. Well, when you're when you're the voice of God, you, first of all, you see everything in the world. No, so it's a that... whole difference. Travis is on a different level. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Resurrect. But that's the that is the kicker. Is like uh, creatives like Lisa have to have these representations yes. in the world oh, yeah. and other in order to get absolutely because if if you don't people think there's something wrong you know as a creative person i was just an option for a car commercial i really wanted i like i need the job and i sent them a video of myself and i was on option still and then last night you know all these clients look at your instagram page you know they want to see your personality yeah. or like what your potential is and I think that was the deal breakers when they like tried to look at my page the past couple of days and like it's non-existent and then I didn't get the freaking job. No, and I think we can say that this hack actually so far has cost you 20 grand. Yeah. I'm pissed. If not a lot well, more. Well, it's only it's so recent, but like you know, like my page disappeared 3 4 days ago and like this whole timing situation of this car commercial like I sent in the self tape and did all this stuff and then well, listen, if, if all else fails, you can send them my picture with the water jug in the front seat of a car. I mean, that is a car picture. It's a nice car, too. <laughs> Super nice. But, um, but I wonder, so what does it mean? Like, to, Let's just say that your efforts to re- recapture your account fail, which I don't think they will, but we'll, only time will tell. I'm, pr- I'm actually starting to lean towards the fact that I'm, it's possible that I won't get it back. And that's a hard pill to swallow because I'm figuring out, like, do I, I don't want to start over. No, <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't want to do that. But will you? I don't, I'm, I, I've, I don't know. For the past two days, it's all, it's been on my conscience constantly. Like, I can't, I don't know. Cause I really despise it that much. <laughs> like, I don't have time for it. But we know Adam Adam has 12 or 13,000 followers and we know that he's going to post a, a a repost a picture from your account saying my friend Lisa got hacked to follow her. You're like putting him on the spot. I love it. No, he'll do it. 
<laughs> listen to, and then he'll he'll promote his own, and then he'll promote the show and be like, listen to the episode. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, don't listen to the episode. <laughs> That's right. And while you're while you're following Lisa, think of what the heck yeah. with Adam Littman. So I think that that's one thing, but but so you you do think that you would start over? You probably would. No, yeah. I really don't want to. Like I don't want to start off. It's like like with getting followers again, like building that up. You know, like I just feel like it's just such a grueling process, and just so much thought and time goes into it. Travis. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I am going to offer your services to Lisa to walk her through the emails she has to write to Facebook. Sure. In return for which she's going to send you pink dolphins. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Deal. Stop pink dolphins like a picture Eddie. of a, a picture of a pink dolphin. <laughs> it's so much more it's so much it's so much you know more um uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Wholesome. Wholesome. <laughs> but Lisa, the, this thing about the there here's another interesting mm -hmm. thing and it's it's terrible to have to think about starting over. Yeah. Yeah, is, is that you can now be the image that you want to be. Well, I was quite happy with my next yeah, chapter. True. Well, that's what I've been portraying for years on my Instagram also. You know, like, I write educational environmental children's stories, and I've made an effort for years, a conscious effort to be wholesome and to, like, not perceive, like, it's who I am, but, like, to kind of, still post like beautiful pretty pictures that I would get modeling pictures from but nothing to modelly like more more truthful to myself in a way yeah real stuff real stuff it took forever <laughs> well listen this has been an amazing conversation you are <laughs> I can't wait to follow you and your job <laughs> Lisa you're open you're warm you're thoughtful so you. you're creative I mean <laughs> And it's 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 really been a joy to have you on the show, and we're sorry that you're going through tough times. Thank and we you. Will I appreciate that. Absolutely help in any Thank way you. we can, especially with your Instagram yeah. nightmare. Yeah. And, uh, I and appreciate we'll be, it. We'll be searching for followers for you, which shouldn't be. But also, when you get your account back, we want to do a live. Uh, t we want to live tweet your. Things. We want to live tweet oh, your like deleting it. the account after we get it back. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want it back. Like, if I get it back, I'm going to, like, keep it. Okay, she wants it back. <laughs>since we recorded lisa was able to get her instagram account back and she is back online posting instagramming you know, all kinds of things and um and and we're really happy of that, about that outcome but you know the takeaway is the same be super careful you could get fished you could get caught and not everybody's going to get their instagram account back and so be careful So Lisa, like after all that, after the huge time expenditure, after, you know, this potentially losing contact with them, with clients, you know, she reminds me of that line from The Godfather because she wants her account back. Just when I thought I was out. <laughs> they pull me back in. Pull yeah. me back in. And I mean, that draw is intense. So what, what I mean, Travis, you don't have, you're not in, you're not in. So like... Mm -hmm. From your point of view, what does it look like? Well, it's a necessity. It's a necessity for public figures at this point. And so that's one of the things that makes um, just how prevalent Instagram scams have become um, scary because that is, you you can't not have it. It's a requirement for business in a lot of cases. And as soon as it goes away and it can go away very quickly, then you're you're done. You're screwed. Yeah. Well, and, and the problem is, especially when you're in modeling or acting this is your this is your board this is your book yeah. this is uh, you know th this is a shortcut for the old days when you would have to show up and show them the book now you can zoom them and they see the book on well, Instagram. you don't even have to like i've been i've been around these kinds of shoots before and they actually download pictures from instagram and they print them out and they put them on the job so they're really they're really using it a lot I just wonder, though, Adam, like what advice we can give people 
practical advice about not getting hacked because my partner also works in a creative field and also gets jobs through Instagram, but she hasn't fallen victim to them mainly because when she gets the message, she goes, this is a hack, right? Well, it's nice to be able to turn to somebody who's sitting next to you and go, does this look right to you? That is the question I would love for us to instill in everybody's head. Well, one of the main things, and I know we've uh, covered this in another episode, but if someone is contacting you claiming to be from, say, Instagram, Instagram actually has something in your uh, profile and your settings that will say uh, that that's a list of times that Instagram has actually contacted you. Mm -hmm. But the but the biggest problem that happens is that people respond very quickly. They don't think about it. It's it's almost like muscle memory. It's like they they see a link. It says there's a problem. They're mm -hmm. scared now. So they're going to do whatever they have to do to resolve the problem as quickly as possible because this is the way they communicate with the world for their right. business or 100%. their career. And it's all about distraction. Distraction creates vulnerability and fear is an incredible mm -hmm. motivator. Now, Adam, my feeling is that if Instagram wants to continue being this platform where people, creatives, uh, traffic in the work they do, and book it and find people they want to work with and all that, they need to do a better job protecting it. Mark, if you're <laughs> listening... Get on the stick. And we're serious about this. You cannot do this without protecting people because at the end of the day, someone will come along who does protect people better and then yeah. you've got a problem. If you're a hacker and you're actually good at what you do, we encourage you to go on Apple Podcasts, create a bot that just likes our podcast over and over and over and over again. Since, well, no, Apple, we're sorry. We don't really mean that. But what we, what we would like to tell you is, Adam. They should give us five stars. They should tell their friends, their family, their neighbors. They should tell their friends on Instagram, Facebook, you know. Skywriting is a good thing too. We want you to we want people to hear how to protect themselves. And the only way that it's gonna happen, in our humble opinion, is come, listen, rate us, love us, and oh by the way, the next time you're walking down a beach and you see an empty bottle, put a little note in it and say, listen to what the heck with Adam Levin, rate them, write a nice review when you get back from the island. What the Hack with Adam Levin is a production of Loud Tree Media. It's produced by Andrew Stephen, the man with two first names. You can find us online at loudtreemedia.com and on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Adam K. Levin.